Hi, my name is Gary Cox and I'm a senior technical consultant with Bluefish Development Group. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, an issue we ran into with an activity workflow integration that we were working on. Um, as you may know, activity is a uh, new workflow engine for 4.0 and uh, we started already doing some development with the workflows with activity. Um, what we ran into, I'm going to basically provide a pretty detailed description of what we ran into. Um, if you're looking for a more general um, introduction to activity uh, workflow, um, Jeff Potts actually has a really good tutorial um, that goes through. It's been updated to include activity, and that's a great general reference. Um, but one of the things from activity is that allows you to do is talk to other uh, Java objects, and that's what we needed to do in our um, development work. And there's two ways to call a Java object from activity. One is you can instantiate a new object, um, which is what we did not need to do, and what we tried to do was to use an existing singleton that was already instantiated and uh, initialized through Spring. Um, what we found was, for some reason, we weren't able to get um, activity to talk to our class. And so today I want to kind of talk through what we, what we ran into, a couple of the gotchas when you're trying to do that, and kind of the easy steps to configure your object to be callable from an activity workflow. So before we get started talking about um, some of the issues that we ran into trying to uh, call our class from activity, I just want to go over real briefly kind of what steps are required um, to set up a delegate um, within to be used by activity. Um, so really there's three things that you need to do. Uh, the first is to ex have your class extend the base Java delegate class. Um, that's a class that's within Alfresco. It's actually a wrapper around Java delegate class that's defined in activity. Um, but it provides a couple of things that you'll need to be able to uh, work with an Alfresco. Um, the second step would be to define your class uh, as, a, as a beam in your Spring config. And then the last thing basically is to implement the execute method that's part of um, uh, the base Java delegate, delegate class. Um, there's an example of this already out of the box that you can look at for an example. Um, the nominated invitation workflow has several delegate calls and uh, classes that have been created. So if you look at the XML for the bean configuration there and um, the, Java, the Java code in the source, you can kind of see um, how the basic wiring is put together. Um, the problem that we ran into is we went through these steps and our class was not accessible. Um, we thought we were doing everything correctly and uh, when we make calls to the delegate, it would never get to the class. Um, so we kind of puzzled over this for a while. And it looks like the issue we're running into basically was kind of an order of initial initialization problem. Um, even though we had extended the base Java delegate class, some of the initialization um, was not occurring in the right order, so our class was never added um, to the bean registry that's uh, required um, as part of the activity uh, bean registry. So basically, when Alfresco starts up, there is an activity, activity bean registry that gets created. And any beans that need to be accessible from activity need to be added to this map. Uh, the key of the, this map is the class name, and then the value is the class object. And even though you should get that automatically when you extend the base Java delegate, um, for some whatever reason, we weren't being added to the hash map. So our class was never available to activity. And so what we found is um, actually a really easy solution after puzzling over the order of initialization for a while is basically we just needed to make sure that our class, our bean, excuse me, depended on the uh, activity bean registry being instantiated before we uh, brought our, uh, our bean was instantiated. Once we did that, we get added to the map and everything is good. Uh, one other hurdle that we ran into was we typically name our beans sort of lowercase, uh, first letter than, you know, normal camel case. Um, but this actually, the bean map is a uh, class name, which is typically uh, first letter uppercase. So the net out is basically you just make, make sure that your bean ID matches your, um, your class name exactly and you'll be fine. Um, so once those two things were taken care of, um, we were able to call our uh, delegate from activity workflow and everything worked fine. Uh, I'm going to provide a real brief uh, whiteboard example of just kind of a, a spring configuration for um, a class that will work. Uh, what we did to make things easier is we created an abstract bean that has a dependency on the activity bean registry. And then our other class beans uh, use that abstract bean as their uh, parent. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just, just write out a quick uh, couple of uh, bean definitions just as an example. Uh, one is the abstract bean that our other beans will use. Um, just, and this will help make sure that you are, um, your object gets correctly registered with the bean registry. Um, 
the last thing I'll do is kind of write out the uh, public class um, definition for your for the class we use that, that extends the uh, base Java delegate class. Um, so what we did, you don't have to use an abstract bean, but we did it just made it easier. Um, just make a, a bean called, just in this case, abstract uh, workflow delegate, basically. And then have its parent be the base Java delegate bean. And then the last part of this, two parts, one is to say this is abstract. So this is not pointing to any class. And then, then we're going to do depends on. And then it depends on the activity bean registry. So now we have this, basically this abstract bean that we can use. So any other classes we create, we don't have to write all this logic again, we'll just use what is this abstract class. So for example, if I make a bean, my workflow bean, let's call it my workflow class, then its parent will be the abstract workflow delegate. And then you just need to um, put the class. We'll make up a package path here. Maybe. So now I have uh, this being my workflow class references a class in my uh, source code, and it's dependent on the activity being registry. Um, it's important to know, even though my parent here is the abstract workflow delegate, my Java class is still extending the base Java delegate. So, um, so public um, class, we're calling it my workflow class. It extends base Java delegate. So this is your in your source code. Um, but then it, by depending on this abstract theme, you don't have to keep rewriting um, this whole phrase over and over again to save some little now, if you have one bean, you're going to instantiate that this is kind of irrelevant. But if you have four or five, like we, we did in our, in our code, then it may say it's still a configuration code. Um, okay. okay, so that wraps up kind of the issue we ran into and how we resolved it. I hope that's helpful to you out there. Um, one thing to keep in mind, this is an issue we ran into on 4.0.1. Um, we haven't tried this on 4.0.2 to see if the behavior is the same, but uh, that's just come out this week. Um, so we'll try it again on there, um, but I assume the behavior is going to be, this, be similar. Um, anyway, thanks for joining us today, and I uh, hope you guys can join us for future videos. Thanks.